morning, everyone. I hope you can all hear me. Wave to me if you can hear me. There you go. Thank you so much. It's so wonderful to see you guys. Um, it's been a while that uh, we have addressed one another like this, but I am so glad of the opportunity that has been given to me to share what the Lord has in store for you and for me today. Um, thank you for those beautiful testimonies. Uh, I was really blessed and touched by them. It is good to know that the Lord is still firmly on the throne and leading our lives and directing us towards his plans and purposes. Also, thank you, Gladdy, for the scripture reading and uh, also for that uh, hymn, Ancient Words, uh, Selena. Uh, it was such an apt one. And uh, so thank you for that. Um, I struggled a bit this time uh, in asking the Lord and seeking him and, and asking him, uh, what is it that you want to speak with your people? What do you want me to bring? And, you know, humanly, when we do this, it's all over the place, isn't it? But, uh, but then uh, the Holy Spirit guided and burdened me, actually, with a topic which is not at all maybe in the season, or maybe it is for this season and we are um, and the Lord wants us to hear this. And so nevertheless, let's just uh, bow down and seek the Lord as uh, as we bring the word of the Lord and we learn together. Let's bow down and um, and pray. Father God Almighty, we want to come before you and we want to thank you, Lord, for this time that you've given us. Lord and Master, uh, I want to give this time to you, O Lord, and we ask that you will be present, that your Holy Spirit will minister unto each one of us. Father, I pray that you'll open up our hearts and our minds to accept and to know what's in your heart, O oh Lord Jesus. And when we have heard you clearly, Abba Father, that we'll be able to put it into action, O oh Lord, our Master, to bring glory and honor to your name. And so, Lord, our Master, I also bring myself as weak in human nature that I am. Father, I bring myself and Lord, I pray that you'll anoint me a double portion today, Lord Jesus, that I can bring the word that you have for your people, O oh Lord, our Master. Uh, Lord, and uh, Lord, we will allow me to only speak what you have put in my heart for your people, O oh Lord, nothing more and nothing less. And Father, that every word that comes, O oh Lord Jesus, from you will be a source of edification, conviction if need be, exhortation and glory to your name. Thank you, Master. Have your way, have your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Roshan, uh, for being so, I'm so impressed, first of all, for the efficiency. And I praise God for you are indeed a blessing. And so please allow me to share my screen. Um, okay, sorry about that. Uh, one second. Okay, is every one of you able to see my uh, my screen? Give me a thumbs up so that I know. Okay, thank you so much, uh, media team. Okay, so um, this is what I have titled my sharing today. Uh, but nevertheless, we're going to have a few, a little bit of interaction. And uh, since the camera is on you, and uh, I'll be asking you a few things. And if you remember or you have uh, uh, gone through that particular things and you know about this, I would like you to raise your hand and show me a response, okay? Okay, so if you have ever used... Uh, the Orkut, you know, do you remember the chatting app Orkut? How many of us remember? Do you, have you ever used it before? You can raise your hands and show me if you've ever used this chatting app that came much before. Not even one? Okay. Oh, there you go. Thank you. I have company here. Okay. What about if you have used Yahoo Mail or Microsoft Outlook Mail? Just raise your hands if you've used them. All right. And I'm sure a few of us have been hanging on to our AOL mails, maybe or Hotmail accounts, isn't it? But then now I'm sure most of us have a Gmail account. How many of us use a Gmail account here? Thank you for letting me know that response. And I'm sure if I ask the older elderly people amongst us, uh, they will say first they started with a rotary dial telephone. And then they started with the digital touch telephone and then moved on now to a smartphone, isn't it? So all of us have had some form of tryst with a emerging trend in our life. And some we embraced for the betterment and some we casually abandoned as they did not add to our emerging lifestyle. The so changes brought on by trends have impacted us through generations till now. 
and they continue to shape our lives. So any change that happens too fast or is prolonged then becomes a trend. Now, for example, technology is a trend that has been making a mark on our lives as a reality, whether we like it, accept it or not. And especially it's seen that there's a bump or a spike during the COVID era where our lifestyles was brought down to the knees. And so this technology trend has brought on many changes in life, isn't it? And also changes in people's behaviors. And these changes became trends, which for the most part have been unsettling till now. My adult daughter tells me it's not cool now anymore to call up people and talk to them. But the vibing thing to do is to message. And I still find it a little bit, uh, you know, unrealistic. But I'm trying to see how to vibe with the, uh, with the young and reach them where they are. So many people, especially the older generation and many other generations that I have put up on the screen today, are facing, uh, you know, and are being affecting, uh, being affected by the trends that are emerging nowadays. So even though we all use smartphones and other devices, not each one of us opt that we want to be locked up into a virtual space, isn't it? We don't like having just that one-sided interaction with the mobiles. It is most of us, right? And so uh, people have been uh, are seeing that they're wanting to have a meaningful personal interaction with one another maybe not with too many people but with a few at least and so the fact is as humans we are made to be highly sociable and despite how much we utilize social media daily it has not brought us any closer together or significantly improved our way of life in the real world where it matters and so we see that some trends are global some are local some have fizzled out as soon as they came, but some have thrived in the aftermath of the global pandemic. At the same time, some were silly too. I don't know if you remember during the first lockdown, every family was trying to do a sourdough starter. Do you remember this? Everybody was trying to bake breads and very soon we realized not all of us are made to be bakers, right? And so that trend quickly fizzled out. And so we realize that of all the trends, okay, whether they're harmful, whether they are dangerous, whether they're silly, whether they're global or local, all the trends of our last generation, especially the trends that impacted our relationships with God and each other were found to be the most disruptive. So today we will learn uh, uh, together about how to develop a biblical response to the impact of emerging trends in an increasingly digital world. In other words, a believer's response in a digital world. And today our objective will be to understand, to try and understand the reach of trends and accept the impact uh, in the right way. And also as believers to try and commit to become positive trendsetters and to help others around us to overcome the negative impact of any emerging trend. Now, you must be thinking, right, why this? Why should we even learn about this, right? Now, Carrie Newhoff, a best-selling author, quoted this. He said, the future will be deeply digital and deeply personal. I think he had a glimpse into the future somehow. The technology boom and access that we have to info today via Google, chat, GPT, and AI are bringing out many new changes, right? Trying to keep up with the new change every day have made you know, many of us feel a little helpless at times. And our today's technology is also feeding into our mental health and not necessarily helping us as predicted to make us whole and healthy. Now, our medical professionals that we are blessed with in our congregation can attest to this fact. According to Data Reportal Digital 2023 and the ICEF Monitor, which are survey makers, they did the survey and found out that today's world has 8 billion population. And out of the 8 billion, 5 billion people are having access to the internet through a digital device. And out of the 5 billion, 93.4% are active users. Isn't that staggering statistic? And I believe more and more will have access to the internet, even as Elon Musk's Starlink programs becomes active and many such will come into play. 
So I'm going to put up a statement on the screen and I'd like you to raise a hand in response if you think it is true or false, okay? So the statement is this. Social trends are completely out of our control and our response to them doesn't change anything. Social trends are completely out of our control and our response to them doesn't change anything. Is this statement true or false? If you think it is true, can you just raise your hand and show me your response? If you think it is false also, you can raise your hand. Okay, thank you for that one hand saying that it's false. Okay, more hands for false. What about the ones who think that it is true maybe? Anyone for the true? Okay, thank you for that interesting note. If I may ask Roshan uh, and pick one volunteer to say, why do they uh, give me something in support for the answer of whether they said true or false? One person who raised their hands, please. I think I saw Joshila raise a hand too somewhere. Yes, yes. maybe Joshila. Uh, I think it is false <clears throat> because a social trend uh, is what most of the uh, people, most of the people do are doing. We don't need to agree with or follow what is being done. And uh, yes, our response uh, will change, right? If there, there's a trend, normally these uh, reels and all, they make some dance moves. So everybody does that and they throw a challenge and whatever they want to do. So if I, f I mean, it's my personal choice. If I I'm not interested in it. I don't think it's something of importance. I will not participate or do that. So if, when I don't do it, I'm breaking the trend there itself. Somebody throws a challenge at me. You know, you should wear pink for a whole week. I might not be interested or I don't have that many pinks to wear. So I just don't do it and then I don't pass it on to the next person. So I am breaking a, a trend there, just to give you an example. So I definitely think it's a false statement. Well, thank you, Joshila. I think we can just shut it down now. I think we are connected in spirit. Um, but uh, nevertheless, to learn it a little more deeper, thank you for that response. It, it is absolutely truth what you said. And so let's dive uh, deeper into this topic and why it should affect us and why should we pay attention to this, okay? So what is a trend? We talk about trends, trending, vibing. What is a trend? Now, a trend is simply a general course or a prevailing tendency. In colloquial English, it's also called as a fad, okay? And it can also be a change or development in a general direction. Why should we pay attention as Christians to any such trends? It's because social and cultural trends will eventually affect all of our lives. No generation part, every one of us will be affected in the areas of relationships, in the way we deal with finances, academics, and medical, and even in the lives of the generation that will follow much after us. And this is why we should be concerned about the impact on our lives, especially if the impact could have negative connotations. Now, trends have also shaped politics, education, and even our cultural practices. For example, the LGBTQIA proponents, they have sought to influence governments all around the world and also at social levels to legalize the same-sex marriages, right? And also to include books that redefine family not as intended by God, straight from the nursery school level. And this is why we must pay attention to the trends that are happening around. Now, there are also trends in fashion that are promoted exclusively by the entertainment industry. Now, who are quickly who quickly pick up these things? Our youth and our children, isn't it? And so we must pay attention as a believer to the trends that are emerging around us. Now, a disclaimer, not all trends are bad, right? But if the negative trends are not addressed early, we risk a new behavior, which is often offensive, becoming an integral part of the society. For example, our young children. Now, many of us, moms and dads, we work, and that is understandable. But what we have done is we've started a trend that where we give away our mobile devices or our internet devices to our little children 
to keep them entertained or to use the mobile device as a nanny or as a babysitter so that the children can allow us to work freely. But having done that, now the children are so much used to uh, having just one interface with a non-speaking device that as they grow, they're unable to empathize and sympathize and relate to people on the, in the outside world. And take away a mobile device or an internet device from a young child and you will see the behavior which is often offensive. And so uh, when a trend, when, when they pose uh, uh, and they have a negative connotation to them, uh, we must really address it very early. Otherwise, we may have a negative effect on our society later on. So how are some of these trends spreading that we should consider? Now, most trends develop around demographic groups. That means uh, a group with the same language, maybe, or people from the same state, or it could be groups who have the same economic status or they all share a common experience. Like for example, at one point, marathon running was such a huge trend, isn't it? And so all the people who love to run and all they gather together. And so very quickly it became a trend. And so trends are fueled by the increasing numbers of this 8 billion population in the world trying them out because they're simply curious of how they are, how does this trend work and how does this catch on. For example, I don't know if you remember, uh, we had during the lockdown, the first lockdown, we had uh, Tali Bajao Corona Bhagao. Now I knew, I mean, all of us knew that medically it was not possible, but each of us tried it. You know, I could see in that time all my neighbors trying it out just to see because they're curious to see how this trend would catch on and uh, I'm glad it fizzled out soon for uh, I mean I don't think we could take the noise every day could we and also if we want another example currently we see it happening in our country where people have become hyper vigilant about religion and miscreants are using this trend to spread their own agendas with the media becoming a willing ally so trends in society are often shaped and accelerated by the technology trend and they go hand in glove, like finding efficient ways. Remember, during the Corona time, we couldn't travel to work outside of our homes. And so very quickly, we used technology to form the trend of working from home. And of course, it, it solved the purpose. But if you see, it has now led to a burden on mental health. And so technology not necessarily made us better communicators or more caring of one another. The Institute of uh, National Health in the US has indicated that in fact, the opposite has happened. People are feeling more lonelier than ever before. In 1950, a sociologist named David Reisman coined an interesting phrase, and that phrase is the lonely crowd. This was coined much before Facebook and Twitter ever came. And certainly long before we all had smartphones, people feel lonely in a crowd because they don't have, excuse me, because they don't have friends in that crowd. And this is why we try to find friends in social media, don't we? But this pattern has not exactly helped us. Now, I remember every time we go to a, a get together or a party, uh, we meet people and very soon the names are exchanged, the numbers are exchanged and friend requests pop in into our social media uh, pages and we accept them too. But do they become our friends? Because if we want to be friends, we need to know one another a little more deeper, isn't it? We need to know what our likes are, what our interests are, and then know how we can be uh, a, a, a blessing to one another. That is who uh, we are called to be, right? When we say we are friends. But in social media, when we do the quick friend uh, request accept, uh, accepting, we tend to become more of acquaintances than friends. And this is why a book author and a psychology professor in UCLA called Matthew Lieberman wrote in his book, which he titled as Social. He said that one out of every human being today 
is walking around with no one to share their life with. That is a depressing fact, isn't it? And this is referring to the fact that human relationships have stopped developing intimacy because we have fewer people to talk to what is really in our hearts. That means we are doing all the things on top. Hi, hello, we are doing all the things on top. But internally, we are just holding within. We are not sharing our true own thoughts. Neither are we sharing our personal struggles. We are bottling them up without a positive outlet. And so, So in true technology trend form, we are showing hashtag new strong me, where that is not exactly helping, isn't it? This is a dangerous trend and this is seen leading towards mental breakdowns and even having suicidal thoughts in some people. And worse still, when not, uh, you know, addressing these, it is leading also towards harming other people in the society as retaliation we see in the western countries don't we we hear news about you know people who are frustrated in their lives because of their life challenges and no way to to take them out in a better way and so they come out in frustration and revenge and retaliation pick up a gun or harm others uh, just for that little bit of um, uh, you know a refuge for themselves that is a wrong trend isn't it and so we must be able to address it as believers and Christians so as we learn of our response we will consider these three broad examples of how the emerging trends have impacted you and me to grow as Christians in today's age it's important that we pay attention to this it is important that we talk about this as we are called to be the salt and the light of earth so that we may go and shape the world not as human want but as god would want us to so we will look at these three points one by one we will first go at it from the light the light of evolution of church in these emerging trend times the first thing we see is that our worship experiences are now not only in person but also online and mega churches have now given a way to micro churches now this particular uh, evolution has definitely changed how we interact with one another isn't it before we used to only go sunday to sunday but now a few of us are able to be within the confines of our home like me today making use of this technology trend to reach to you right and even how we worship our god and also at the same time the mega churches gave way to to uh, micro churches where in the lockdown time especially smaller groups you know people who were just near nearby could meet with one another because we couldn't meet as a larger body and they catered to uh, one another's needs whether it was physical emotional mental or spiritual uh, needs they were met and we saw a much better growth especially when a small group met in person okay then the evolution of church also happened that now our audiences are much bigger isn't it and uh, the and our mono ethnic churches meaning a single language church maybe or a single state church maybe have made way to multi ethnic churches and technology has helped us broaden our borders and made our audiences more wider and diverse isn't it like for example speaking of live video today it is not made in india but we are able to enjoy and take advantage and make it a blessing into our lives of something that was made elsewhere and so you know uh, we are now able to log into youtube and spotify podcasts and use those services or the worship materials to help us and so we need to be able to educate ourselves more and more on how to use modern technology yes you heard me right so that we can make sure that the gospel of jesus is reached even within these modern times now some might say hey this all is for young people all this is for youth it is not nothing to do with us but you would be surprised at how many uh, senior citizens are making use of this modern technology becoming tech savvy so that they can get their worship experience online and also to put across their thoughts and their reflections for the younger generations to see so we must consider these scenarios as necessary now in the evolution of church for us to be a vibrant and a healthy church in the face of new global local and personal needs uh, now how did the evolution of relationships happen in the light of these trends two generations ago 
our relationships were much more localized and familiar matlab mohalle ke sare bacche our community our colony you know had lots of children and we knew each of those children before isn't it and we knew the children we knew the parents the grandparents and vice versa and if one child would be hurt nobody would wait for that parent only to come and look after the child but the aunties and uncles would go to rush into the child and help and so everyone grew up together two generations ago and everyone looked after one another in familiarity but it doesn't happen now does it a journal in the american society on aging said this the baby boomer generation that is people born between 1946 to 64 are likely to have lifelong relationships why because they went to school together they they played together they interacted physically and i see the same happening on fb groups on alumni meet groups on laughter club groups of my classmates dads and mums and so this particular generation will have lifelong friendships what about the millennials and the after generations you might be thinking right now many millennials that is from 1980 born to 2000 this generation witnessed a huge trend they were caught up in between the physical interactions of the old and the online interactions and they struggled and i believe they still struggle i am one of them next we come to generation z and generation alpha which is 2012 onwards which is going currently now these this generation has witnessed a huge trend change where uh, you know they caught up in the tech boom and they are more likely to have thousands of friends on social media but they still feel alone in the real life so our ministry on in the evolution of relationships should focus on uh, building meaningful and long lasting relationships with god and other people if we have looked at the evolution of our church services and our relationships Uh, then how should our uh, spiritual growth and maturity be too isn't it that should also be evolving and so very quickly we'll look at this the first thing we see is that our efforts in discipleship should be more intergenerational that means we need to bridge the generational gap between those uh, four generations that i put up across the screen the previously and we should be respecting and sensitive to the issues that are affecting each generation secondly modern media may give us access to more and more info than we ever thought possible but we must never allow that same media to separate us from god or from each other and thirdly the evolution of spiritual growth and maturity happened thus that growing spiritually is about becoming more connected to our fellow believers in Jesus as he is making us all come together so that means there are other churches who follow different practices but because the lord is making us grow spiritually we understand that we ought to be working with one another because Jesus is making us part of the same spiritual family that is evolving that we need to see so the implication of these three scenarios is that we need to commit to become more mature disciples of Jesus and also have a burden to disciple others within these very bounds no matter where the prevailing trends of our society may be flowing so what can we learn about trends from the bible itself well if we simply looked at how the bible dealt with change or the introduction of a trend it will help us let's quickly look at the first point when often when there's an introduction of change that was noted in the scripture the first reaction that we saw from man was a desire to return to the familiar and who better to tell than us in gci right now isn't it we know how hard change can be and we struggled when we had to uh, move from being wcg to gci right and so uh, in exodus 16 also we see this that here in the bible people resisted the change and influenced a trend in the wrong direction even when good was promised at the end with some difficulties along the way and so we must again note uh, you know when learning from the bible we must note this too that not all changes or trends are necessarily bad but it's always not easy to persuade people to move forward isn't it that's what we see in exodus 16 even when uh, something was introduced uh, it is not easy and it would it may be good but it's hard to persuade people to move forward 
Secondly, we learn from trends uh, from the Bible is that when God introduces a change, something new and something major, when he introduces and, and he promises to do it long before it happens. For example, the pouring out of the Holy Spirit on mankind. What was seen, we can see it through Joel 2, 28 to 29 and Acts 2, 1 to 3. We saw uh, a new change that was introduced by God himself in Joel chapter 2. And that was fulfilled in Acts 1 uh, on the day of Pentecost. Right? That's something, a new change that the Lord has introduced himself. But then we see that the people who gathered in the upper room were expectant of that change. And the others, equally, we see in the Bible that they were indifferent and sometimes even clueless about what is this change. And so we must understand that the new trends that God introduces will get the attention and the, uh, and the curiosity of the surrounding community and eventually the world. Right. Meaning the people who observe keenly about what God is doing and how he is fulfilling his, his uh, will and his words will also be very much interested to know more about what is this new trend that God is introducing? What is the change that we must understand and we must study it? We see uh, in Acts chapter two, right from the start of the chapter till the end, when we read, we realize that the first church, the community of believers at that time accepted the new trend and they allowed this new trend to take root into their hearts and to affect their lives. We must also learn from the Bible that embracing the future is not easy unless one is convinced that God is in it. Now, the early church allowed God to reveal himself and his plans through the new trends and changes he had introduced. In other words, my brothers and sisters, they opened up their minds and hearts towards God being the supreme all-knowing being and that he will teach us new things. And so we have to obediently follow his direction and leading as we see in Acts chapter 2, 42 to 43, that they devoted themselves, the people devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. We also learn from the Bible that uh, Christians should be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit as these new trends emerge. And we must ask God what we should do in context with that new trend. That was a practice from before. And we read this from the experience of the church in Antioch in Acts chapter 13. The teachers and the prophets there received direction from the Holy Spirit. What did the people do? They took their time to fast and pray. And then when the Holy Spirit directed them again, they sent Paul and Barnabas away on their assigned work. So when we, when we see a new trend emerging and when we ask for direction, the Holy Spirit will give us instruction on how to move forward when we earnestly seek it. And so from the Bible, we can realize that not uh, the trends and the and the patterns that are embraced by the world don't always please God. And we have seen that time and again, isn't it? And this is why Christians must be discerning to follow God's will. Not every interest that people take up in the world should be interesting us. And we want to be conscious of the fact that God wants us to be discerning. In other words, we must know and understand whether a particular thing is to be done or not done, whether following a certain trend will take us towards God or far away from him. And so we must seek his will, as it says in Romans 12 too, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. So then in the light of these new and emerging trends in a digital world, how should you and me Christians respond? Firstly, we need to stay faithful to the biblical principles. Now, how do we do this? We can do this by ensuring that we have daily uh, uh, habits which will uh, make us mature in the spiritual walk with Christ. And that will in turn keep us from following any trend that is evil in God's sight. Now, the Bible, we all know, is a daily resource, isn't it? And it keeps us from being misled or by being completely deceived by the devil. And this is why we need to know 
we need to know the word of god by ourselves and study it deeply by ourselves personally the statistics of late show that many people only depend on the word from the pulpit on a sunday to sunday basis and they are not opening their bibles at home or in the midweek to study or at any point of time other than the time that they are in the church my brothers and sisters i hope that you and i don't fall into that category of people because in luke 4:4 jesus attests and says man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the lord the word of god is our compass we need to study it so that we know which way to turn always towards the light of god uh in our second response as a christian uh we need to study intimately and know the culture that we live and serve in why should we do this you know even we have to study uh intimately what is our businesses what what's happening in our businesses what's happening in our homes and in and around us because trends affect and engage people and we are in the people business aren't we Jesus calls us to be fishers of men in the kingdom of God. In other words, you and I have a responsibility to know the trends that are impacting the people so that we can build relationships better, we can build and impact them better and reach them for the kingdom of God. So this could mean for you and me to get more involved in our children's school, not only what we have been doing till now, but to to go deeper delve deeper into the schools and see what are the trends that are affecting children of this age and also we need to learn what are the trends right now happening in businesses uh what are the trends that are upsetting and impacting the political scenarios in our country and this is why perhaps paul encourages us from 1st corinthians 9:22 to 23 he says i have become all things to all people and i do this for the sake of the gospel and so there is a need for us to study the culture around us because some trends tend to create new cultural practices and eventually they change people's perspective of the gospel itself and god's love for them and so we must be wary of anything that can mislead us away from the way of salvation because first john 3 1 to 3 warns us and says uh, we must be cautious because the the world doesn't know uh, us because it doesn't know him so we must be cautious so as to consciously keep ourselves in the line with the will of god thirdly our response should be by showing the way and leading the way now how can we do this we can do this by living by example and becoming a godly trend setter in life we must get to know our community deeply community meaning church members upar upar se nahi but deeply get to know them get to know our business partners get to know our colleagues and what are the things that shape their lives so that we can become a positive trend setter or a godly influence among them now you and i can show others what it is to live a life for god in terms of our behavior if we ourselves want to live an accomplished honorable and holy life then we need to start to set an example to inspire others to live honorable lives too isn't it we have to motivate others by our words by our actions into godly behavior and this is why first john 2:15 to 16 says do not love the world or anything that is in the world but for everything of the world is lust of the flesh lust of the eyes and pride of life and it comes not from the father but from the world so we must show and lead the way always we also need to remember that spiritual disciplines you know spiritual disciplines we have talked about uh, you know praying together uh, i'm so it's so wonderful to know that corporate prayers are taking place now that right? spiritual disciplines uh, and habits will shape Uh, you know our godly trends tomorrow and so we must be aware of this at all times and so we need to be ready to live out god's word on a daily practice on a daily basis right and so many times i have seen uh, there are some parents who come to me for counseling uh, parents especially of teenagers and uh, preteens and they tell me that every sunday 
I have a struggle with my child because they do not want to come with me to church uh, because their friends have a brunch and they talk about interesting things that are happening in the world. And I will miss out on the time if I come to church. And they also sometimes tell me that, uh, you know, the child doesn't anymore want to uh, study the word with them in their prayer time or in their daily devotions because they want to explore their faith. And so when things like this are being told to me and they come to me for help, the first thing I ask them is this, uh, do you practice these things that you are expecting from your children? And therein lies the problem, isn't it? Daniel 16 uh, very clearly, you know, shows us an example in Daniel. And, you know, he developed a godly habit that was right in the Lord's sight. Even when the decree was told, you know, go and kneel down at the uh, Nebuchadnezzar's uh, statue, he still went up to his room. And as he had done before, he knelt down and he prayed. And no law, no event, nothing that was against the purpose of God could interfere with that godly habit at all. And so if more Christians, more kingdom citizens like you and me purpose to live out spiritual practices that honor God daily, then we could establish trends for the benefit of our children, for the benefit of our world and for the establishment of his kingdom. So you and I, my brothers and sisters, have a responsibility before God to become positive trendsetters. We should be the ones that lead a positive change. The Lord talks about this. Uh, in the Old Testament as well as the, the New Testament through many of these verses when we go through, right? In Hebrews 13, 7, it says, Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. So our people that we want to impress or we want to influence need to imitate us. For that, the change should start from us. So in conclusion, we must think of our role as believers about what God has entrusted to us in managing and responding to every new emerging trend in the world. And we must commit our lives to live in obedience to his word, ensuring that we are not subject to every unwanted change by every trend that is happening by the way of vibing, you know, but seeking his will and taking the purpose of him and then putting it to the best practice. In conclusion, secondly, we need to know that trends and changes are expected in life, but we should not allow ourselves to be controlled by them, but rather we need to learn from them and filter them through the purposes of the kingdom of God in our lives and for the world. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a famous German theologian and a pastor and martyr, actually put up this humbling quotation before he died, and that is this. Your life as a Christian should make non-believers question their disbelief in God. Your and mine life, brothers and sisters, should make every non-believer that we come across question their disbelief in our God. So let's commit ourselves to become godly trendsetters. If we have an influence, even a little bit in any sphere of our life, let us commit to become godly influences, godly trendsetters for our children and for our future generations to come. Gladie has read in the scripture uh, reading these two verses. And so uh, I want to just conclude and encourage each one of us today that the world is looking for godly men and women to lead the way into a better and more meaningful life than the one that we are experiencing now. But the question remains, are we ready to lead this charge by becoming a godly trendsetter today? This song that I'm going to play for you now is, it says, in the crushing, in the pressing, Lord, put in me new wine. And it's interesting that Joshua talked about this pressing and crushing, making us into something that we haven't been before, isn't it? And so this song talks about, make me a vessel, O Lord. Make me an offering, Jesus. Bring new wine out of me. Let's sing along to this song as a prayer unto the Lord in the evolution of the new trends that we see as a response to, uh, to understand and learn what should be our response to every trend, whether it is in our grandparents' lives, our lives or in our children's lives too, so that we can bring glory to the Lord. 
May the Lord bless you as you hear this closing song. <laughs>